Hello everyone, Risky Toothpick here, back again with some more Ad Infinium. And last time we were finally able to get into our brother's room. And it kind of showed a whole bunch of his art. Looks like he probably wanted to be an artist. These paintings are probably his own, maybe. And uh, now we're just trying to figure out where his items are. And we find ourselves back at the garden in the greenhouse, which I find very cool. It's a beautiful room. Like, if you had a house and you had this greenhouse, you knew. You know you're wealthy. You're like, oh, ho, ho, come on into my greenhouse. Like, that's wild. Come back. You're dreaming. Can you hear me? Okay. And like that guy says, we might be dreaming. We're not really for sure. Oh, there's a ladder, though. Okay, so a lot of things have kind of changed in here. The resurrection. You never liked this picture. Self. He looks at you sadly as if he knew what fate had in store. Okay, so we needed all those paintings. Here's the the crazy well. I don't I don't even know what the idea of the well was inside here. <laughs> but that's some ingenuity right there. Up the ladder we go. And you know I hate ladders, they're so slow. I mean that one wasn't that bad. Well, it's all broken there. So I'm, guess I'm guessing all these paintings we picked up, we need to put them in a certain order. And I'm guessing it's going to be in one of these rooms up here. They have found my Johannes. My heart is bursting with joy. He is already in Lübeck and will be here soon. I have cleaned the large attic room, so he may be made comfortable. I shall buy paints and canvases for him. My Johannes is coming home. Now, was it Johannes or was it Paul? But they got him mixed up. Eligible to inform you that your son, Johannes von Schmidt, is alive and has been discharged from military services as a war invalid. Until now, his physical conditions has necess necessitated long-term medical care at Reserve Military Hospital 3rd in Lubeck. Your son can be taken into your care in two weeks' time, September 2nd, 1918, if blank rest eligible. So it looks like maybe the two sons aren't dead, or the son didn't die in war, but died at home. And, yep, as he says, we need to finish something. October 5th, 1918. I refuse to go up to the attic. The wailing and clattering alone is unbearable. And the smell. Yeah, the son survived, but maybe death would have been a, a way out. Oh my god, let me let me check out this room at least. Oh, so it takes us back in here. Okay. Well there shouldn't be anything, so. Yeah, we've already listened to that. Let's go up into the attic. Oh, we need a key. What am I missing? Wake up, soldier. Soldier. You need to come back. You need to finish it. Let's 
I'm just gonna have it like that. Okay, well, we're not stopping for that, so. Okay, that's locked. Let's go over here. Okay, there might be something in here. So you never know. There might be something hidden in the book. The bookcase. Wait, what does he say? His father's door is locked. Doesn't he want to see you? Who knows? We might have missed something in the garden. There might be a key or something. Yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised if that's the case. Because we kind of walked through the whole area. Let's see, locked doors. I do hear that electricity, which kind of draws me. Nope. We're actually uh, close to the brother's room. Let's take this upstairs. I don't think there's any reason for us to go down there. All these are locked, if I remember correctly. Uh, wrong way. Oh, our guy's finally been tired. He's gonna like pass out. He's like, oh, I can't see straight. It's broken. Okay, let's see if there's a key in here that we might have missed first. Not really. This is to kind of like tell you, hey, you need to go to the garden. Yeah, I don't see any. What the hell was that? Hat? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're fine here. Oh, that was weird. Why go down when you can go up? Oh, yeah, we've been here already before, right? It's all locked. That's right. Okay. So there is something in the garden. So it's either in the garden or I, I like, walked right past the key. I didn't even, like, see it, you know? Which is a possibility. That telephone is ringing. It is drawing me. Is our guy so tired from all the running? It's either that or maybe we can go back to our bedroom and go to sleep. That might be a possibility. I haven't even tried that. All right. So we're back here. Let's check this little room. Since it's a uh, very important Okay, that's been blocked off. Okay, why would we want to move it?
So maybe here? Because wasn't this something we had to do? Find the code for the lock. There we go. Now, in our documents, Spring Awakening 2248. Right here. Okay, so those who gaze at Mother's Tree are the same and yet not so. Once I told in confidence, you see a secret that I know. The Keeper of My Secret has a mouth like Spring Awakening, so 22. Four and eight. That should be the code. Twenty-two. Or there's something hidden. You have found the key to the attic. Alrighty. Well, there we go. Some problem solving, some puzzle skills. Took me, you know, a little bit longer than it probably should have. But now, we can get into that door, and we don't have to worry about the telephone that's ringing nonstop. Which drives me insane. No wonder, you know, there's ghosts and the living and the dead are all in shambles. You got to deal with all these telephones going off 24-7. Can't get no sleep. Alrighty. You're no son of mine. You're a disgrace to this family. You perverts are driving our nation to ruin. Carl, don't. Nothing happened. War is coming, and you're going to die. Look at yourselves. You're not men. Okay. Ooh, feathers. Cuckoos do not brood themselves. Instead, they usually lay their eggs one at a time in the nest of other birds taking one of the original eggs in return, which they then often devour. Certain species lay their eggs in the nest of smaller birds. In such cases, the raising of the cuckoo frequently leads to the death of the mother's true chicks. The young cuckoo grows quickly and requires large quantities of food, which it steals from the legitimate chicks before throwing them out of the nest. Despite this, the parents will still sacrifice everything to keep it fed. Interesting. Which, you know, the cuckoo is possibly the living being here. Because she thinks it's her son, or one of her sons. In reality, it's not. It's something far worse. You remember how much time your, brothers used to your brother used to spend with his pigeons. He could spend hours watching them soar over the rooftops. Okay, some more of these suitcases that we have to move. We'll probably just move it up. Yeah, that should just get it right out of the way. Now, this is a pretty good, cool little lamp thing they got going on. Okay, well, let's go up. Let's see what's going on. And then we'll work our way back down. So a whole bed. You caught them before he could finish it. Oh. Nothing happened. Did it, Johannes? Tell him. Christian? You've got no idea who I am. <gasps> Paul did the right thing telling us what you were doing up here. Look at you, a pair of filthy strumpets. 
You repulse me, the pair of you! Get out! Get out of my house! And you know, you know what, 1914, 19, yeah, before 1914, uh, being, you know, being gay or having a relationship with another man, if you were, you know, a guy, was a big no-no, if you, if you didn't know that already. <laughs> like, big no-no. Be shunned from the community and whatnot. Dear Johannes, they say the war will be over before the first leave, the before the first leaves fall. Won't that be grand? The others at the cafe said you've enlisted too. How marvelous. You'll still be able to move out from home once we have emerged victorious. We'll meet again at the front as comrades fighting for the fatherland. Your father was right. What happened between us in the attic was just childish games, wasn't it? Your friend Christian, train to the Western Front, August 20, 1914. So it looks like Christian isn't really, you know, gay, but maybe the brother was. Or maybe it was just him, you know, being an artist. Everything here is just how he left it five years ago. Uh, can we, can we get down? Okay, <laughs> find a way. Oh, the music just disappeared. Johannes's paintings will protect me from the cuckoo. I show them to it every day to make sure. The cuckoo wants to paint too, but I have taken its awful paintings away from it. I don't want to see them. I give it nothing but the black oil paints to drink. It wants them, and I don't want it to live. Damn, the mother really just... You know, the mother herself kind of got corrupted with her own emotions, just ate away at her. The thing that has returned to me is not Johannes. It is a cuckoo. Come to sit in his nest. A cuckoo, that's what it is. It sits up there in the attic and expects me to cater to its every whim. Just like he used to be. Carl's father. Perhaps it is Carl's father, torturing me still. He refuses to remain dead. Wow. The mother wished for the brother to paranoia. And then when she got him, she didn't believe it was him. So she treated him poorly, probably till he died. Oof. You know, it's kind of like, be careful what you wish for, you know? Which sucks for the brother, because the brother probably didn't have, you know, you know, no idea what was going on. He was just like, you know, I'm injured, I'm hurt. You know, he probably lost, you know, a large percentage of his uh, mobility. The pain is still fresh, but it can't be. There's something else up here in the attic. The smell of the paint makes you feel sick. The only one with color. You plead to finally wake up and be let out of his out of this nightmare. This is just a nightmare. You don't want to know what's behind the door. What if it is him? What if he's still alive? Uh, were these always here? Let's see what's behind the door. A pigeon. Hospital. Uh-oh. What type of terrible place, what type of horrible things are we going to see here? Is there a pigeon? No, the pigeon's gone. But is that why there's blood on these cots? Is it a pigeon? Find a way out of the morgue. Oh, man. You know there's some evil creatures in the morgue.
Pretty dark in here, too. I'll say, let me in. Some dead bodies. For them to be down here, they must have ran out of uh, room. I wonder how bad it stinks in here. Because it's like wet. A little moldy. Ugh. The flesh is rotted. There's rats gnawing on the dead flesh. All 27 of the bodies brought in here were in what can only be described as a pathetic condition. Only one of the soldiers is still alive, and even he is a disgraceful sight. My sanatorium will restore all eligible patients to the physical and mental state required for war. Signed, Dr. Eisenbarth. Eisenbarth inspection. Dear nurses, the way some of the fallen soldiers responded to this morning's inspection of their wounds is of great annoyance to me. The medical recovery process is part of the military duty. This embarrassment is childish and must be exercised from the patient. Signed, Dr. Eisenbarth. Damn, so what's up? what do they do? Did they like shock therapy on maybe? Make them crazy? Is that you in the plane pool? Oh, you want to fly high, huh? Look. I'm the bird. I'll fly with you. We can fly wherever we want together. When they were still young, before they actually kind of turned on each other. Alright, let's go try to find this uh, phone. Because I can hear it in the background and it annoys me. I've been hearing so many phones lately. Man, so dark in here. That's right. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I kind of forgot about the light. Just a, just a tiny bit forgot about the light. Okay, so we need a key to get in there. And I mean, you know, to be honest, it's not much of a light either. But we're getting closer to the phone. Can't pick it up, huh? Okay. Gotta turn the power back on. Head nurse. Assign the patient's lockers according to their patient numbers as soon as they are conscious it shall be the patient's duty to remember these numbers the patient's files must be kept under lock and key at all times they must not be allowed to fall into the patient's hands again in addition soldiers whose mental competence has been largely restored should be assigned simple tasks within the clinic the patients in question must be provided with the keys for said tasks the soldiers shall be responsible for any and all keys given to them Power's out. You wonder if you should follow these cables. Alrighty. The power's out. Ooh, look at that block of cheese. Note to self. Do not forget to lock the patient's files away in the office. Dr. Eisenbarth was furious with Nurse Emma when she forgot the last time. Perhaps I should not have reported her. Emma has not been back to work since she was called into his office. She probably doesn't dare face the doctor again. Or he killed her yeah you never know you know you just you don't know what was going on all 
You know, it's really... Oh, here we go. Little letter. Dear Dr. Eisenbarth, I have taken care of the matter with Nurse Emma. Patient 27 gave me a hand. Junior Dr. Law woke up yesterday. He is a strong young man. He has already asked for more prosthes prosthesis. Yeah, so the head nurse and one of the... One of the patients killed the nurse because she messed up an accident. Jeez. Barbaric animals. A small key with a number engraved on it. Oh, well, we got 28. Dear Emma, today Dr. Eisenbarth tried to force me to cut off a soldier's healthy legs. I refused. Eisenbarth did the deed himself, glaring at me the whole time. He didn't even sterilize the surgical instruments. He has ordered me to report to his office later. The head nurse says we can talk it over and settle the matter. I hope she is right. Uh, yeah, they're going to settle the matter, just not in the, not in the matter you hope. So we have the patients. So, Fritz, rank... Jeff Fretter, Infantry Regiment Number, Battalion Number, Company Under Command of Lutnant Von Schmidt, Dead Body Brought In With Heavy Blood Loss, Left Calf and Arm Ruptured by Explosive Shell. Initial Treatment Consisted of Amputation at the Thigh Using the Pyrogov Method. Patient Revived After Three Days. Diagnosis Male Hysteria. In addition to the expected disorientation, patients made disrespectful remarks about a Kaiser Crying fits, infantile mind explains failure as a frontline soldier and lack of national pride. Recommendation, no improvement following electrical induction, term, terminate treatment, patient to be referred to hospice, locker to be cleaned out. Yep, they were shocking them. Otto, so another one under the command of Lutnant von Schmidt, fractured skull, Malinger, Patient revived after two days. Despite one week of pain therapy, patients still complain of headaches, draining of the cerebrospinal fluid, and removal of the affected region of the skull and brain led to immediate improvement. Recommendation, now fit for battle following further adjustments, send back to the front line immediately. This guy had surgery done on his brain, and he's like, take him back. And then we got Richard here. So, a... Uh, Epilepsy bedwetting. In spite of re reanimation, patient remains in a lethargic state. Displays a tendency towards neurotic trembling and bladder voiding disorder. Neurosis manifests as constant and hysterical shaking of the head and nervous twitching in the limbs. Male hysteria, cowardice. Amputation of the arms and legs, complete dehydration, will be fit for battle after further adjustments. How is he gonna go to battle if he's if his arms and legs have been amputated? <laughs> like, what is he gonna do? Is it gonna be like a body bag out there? General neurological shocks. Patient complains of sleepiness, stomach problems, and loss of hearing following days spent under fire from shells and death. Malinger coward. Both the patient's feigned symptoms and his suicide on the Western Front are the results of cowardice. Some initial success achieved by applying sleep deprivation acoustic trauma and regular doses of vinegar in order to physically induce the symptoms the patient claimed to experience patient is compliant will be fit for battle max mental deficiency patient was buried under soil and rubble rubble for several days prior to death and has exhibited lethargic behaviors ever since patient appears to be dull-witted remarks and file indicate that the soldier fell asleep several times while on night watch Diagnosis, cowardice, sleep deprivation, and removal of the eyelids have not produced the desired results. Terminate treatment, patient to be referred to hospice. They cut out his eyelids. Yeah, we're, we're going to deal with the monster here. And here's Johannes. So here we go. So well, let's see here. He was under command of Lutnant von Schmidt. Patient this is the brother. Lieutenant von Schmidt was not delivered to us. Infected wounds and burns all over body. Left arm severe, severed. Patient was the only one of his company delivered alive. Body and face disfigured by shrapnel and barbed wire. Perversion cowardice. Despite coming from a noble line, the patient had hoped to avoid conscription. 
injuries probably result of attempted suicide. Reports received of sexual perversion in the past. Recommendation, due to the patient's heritage, a completely new course of treatment must be devised. This is of the utmost priority. And then Horst Weber, head nurse, ordered me to sweep the floor in the maintenance room. Great, grateful to be of service. My new legs throb with pain and pride. The droning of the machines reminds me of the cannon that tore me away from the front. We're all comrades here. Everyone has fallen and yet risen again, just like me. Hope we can all experience our baptism of fire together soon. Yes, I'm keeping the key to the maintenance room in my locker number 82. The combination is my best two comrades. So we got to figure out who his best comrades were. We have that note, don't we? We don't. Well, we've been playing enough anyway, so we're going to stop here today. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It's already past the 30 minute mark. We're really going to have to figure out how to find this code because there's there's a paper or something we're missing that talks about his friends and that we just like overlooked somehow in this darkness.